different types of microwave extraction systems have been used for PCBs and several layouts have been shown in this slide. However, PCBs need to be cleaned up and the cleanup methods, there are two distinct methods for cleanup. The two methods are employed for the cleanup of lipids. One is a destructive method and the other one is a non-destructive method. The non-destructive lipid removal, as the name suggests, it is an adsorption column. The method involves passing the extract through the several adsorbent columns. Either it could be alumina, silica and fluorocyl columns in different mesh sizes, levels of activity and column size either separately or in combination are widely used to reduce the sample handling and analysis time. Alumina columns of 10 to 20 gram have a fat capacity of almost 250 milligrams, which means that they can adsorb 250 milligrams of fat, which may not be enough to remove large quantities of lipids. The technique is labor intensive. That means it has to be done again and again on different types of columns like for alumina column, then silica column and then fluorocyl column. So, it is a labor intensive process. Destructive lipid removal, destruction methods using either alkaline treatment which means saponification or oxidative dehydration by sulfuric acid have been used. Somehow the lipid has to be removed. Otherwise, the PCBs will not be able to uh, come out of the extraction medium. Alkaline treatment resembles the saponification used in extraction, but is applied to the solvent extract instead of the food matrix. Saponification has been reportedly used either prior to or in conjunction with PCB extraction. Lipids can be saponified by heating the extract in a small volume of solvent with 20 percent ethanolic potassium hydroxide at 70 degrees for 30 minutes. So, just by agitating with 20 percent ethanolic potassium hydroxide at 70 degrees for half an hour, one can get rid of the lipids and one can get the PCB in the extract. However, because the method is exhaustive, some lo loss of chlorine atom has also been reported. However, this method has a little uh, trickiness that sometimes in some congeners, the chlorine may be cleaved off. So, that will give wrong results. So, one has to optimize and not overdo this particular destructive removal of lipids. Fractionation. Separation of several uh, CBs is normally required prior to analysis. It is necessary to utilize spatial planarity to separate the non-ortho and the mono-ortho CBs present at substantially lower concentrations compared with remaining CBs. Since the range of concentration of CBs is normally too large for all congeners to be measured without additional dilution or concentration and some key CBs are not resolved in just one single GC column regardless of the column phase. So, because these compounds are so close in their structure, it is important to manipulate the process in such a manner that all the congeners should be separated properly. Activated carbon in adsorption column has been widely used to separate non-ortho and the mono-ortho CBs from the remaining congeners. Now, so there was a need to be able to separate the volatiles, uh, non-congeners, non-ortho congeners and mono-ortho congeners and that is how activated carbon was utilized for this purpose. Some workers employed polyurethane foam 
to disperse the activated carbon, but with limited success because polar solvents broke down the foam. Glass fiber was employed as an alternative substrate and the automated methods involved a carbon glass fiber column. So, many manipulations had to be done in order to be able to extract the maximum number of congeners from the extract or the matrix. Chromatographic analysis, it is essential that a pre-separation that is by HPLC is carried out prior to determination of non-ortho CBs. A preparation is called carefully and useful for the determination of mono and di-ortho CBs. Although a direct D GC determination for these CB is possible under optimized GC condition. So, if a little bit of pre separation is carried out with the help of HPLC, then a normal GC machine can be utilized. Infrared spectrometry or IR has also been used as a confirmatory technique for an online GC detection for PCBs. When the concentrations are sufficient and the identities of congeners are needed, infrared spectrometry comes very handy. The information imparted by infrared is very good. More recent combinations of GC or MDGC with both IR and MS to yield GC, IR, MS have increased the utility and usability of the application of IR to find out the PCB determinations. Capillary columns with high resolution GC combined with specific detectors allow for good resolution of highly volatile PCB congeners. GC separation and detection with ECD or MS is the method of choice for routine analysis, particularly for non-ortho compounds. Non-ortho means that the chloro groups are not next to each other. That is what is meant by non-ortho. Different types of columns have been utilized for the analysis of polychlorinated biphenyls, that is the PCBs. On non-polar stationary phases, PCB with homologous group, alkyl, phenyl, cyanopropyl, elute according to their number of orthochlorines, that is 4 is greater than 3 and 3 is greater than 2 and 2 is greater than 1 and 1 is greater than 0. In general, the structured order of PCB separation tends to decrease with an increase in stationary phase polarity. A 5 percent phenyl column that is DB5 of a commercial name has been used as a standard for PCB analysis. Now, let me tell you one thing at this point of time that columns are of different polarity as what I mentioned when I was talking about GC and its working and the different types of column that were used in GC. The different companies have different prefix that is DB or SE may change, but the number that follows the hyphen that is 1517 shows the polarity level of the column. So, that remains the same whether the manufacturer is a Perkin Elmer manufacturer or a DB company manufacturer it does not matter. The polarity of DB5 and PE5 will be the same. However, because of co elution of a number of congeners alternative phases such as DB, XLB and HT8 column have also been tried out carbonate backbone phases developed for high temperature stability showed selectivity for PCB analysis. An HT5 carbonate column gave better separation than DB5 column for mono ortho and non ortho coplanar PCBs. An HT8 carbonate column with combined with DB5 column separated a total number of 106 aerochrore congeners in a GC ECD system and 138 congeners when MS was used as a detector. 
So you can see immediately that in my earlier lecture also I had mentioned that GCECD and GCMS have different sensitivity and here also the aerochlor congeners were identified in different numbers which shows that ECD, ECD detector is less sensitive as compared to the MS detector. Special points that need to be remembered when one is analyzing PCBs. Sensitive methods have been developed for analysis of bio in accumulative PCBs in food. Sensitive methods have been developed for analysis of bioaccumulative PCBs in food. Pretreatment is important. Apart from solvent extraction, extraction methods for these trace pollutants include SOX, P, PSE, SPME, SFE, SOXlate extraction, ASE and MAE. Cleanup of these trace compounds is a tedious job that generates large amount of waste. Destruction methods using alkaline treatment or saponification or oxidative dehydration by sulfuric acid are used. Non-destructive methods employing adsorption column utilized to remove lipids as well. So one can use either a destructive method where there is a possibility of losing out some chlorine atoms or a non-destructive method by employing adsorption columns. Fractionation is also required prior to GC analysis to remove the accompanying pesticides and other chemicals which are not required to be analyzed in the system. The remaining biological material and chlorophyll from the plants. Because there is no single capillary capable of separating all the 209 PCB congener in one chromatograph, more advanced techniques have to be employed such as the use of serial coupled columns, parallel columns and so on. So one can understand that the more the intricate the analysis, the more care has to be taken for designing the methodology. I am again coming back to modern gas chromatography because so far we have studied so many adaptation of gas chromatography and I feel that a more intense treatment once again needs to be done for the modern gas chromatography and the recent developments that have been brought about in this chromatographic technique. Modern trend has been that in the recent developments and trends there is a use of headspace sampling with gas chromatography. I have spoken the word headspace earlier, but I thought that I should spend some special dedicated lecture on the headspace adaptation of the GC machine. A brief overview of headspace analysis technique and theory references will be provided in this lecture. The technique describes that it includes static and dynamic headspace extraction, solid phase micro extraction SPME and several additional techniques now receiving attention. Examples of application in environmental, clinical, forensic, biological, food, flavor and pharmaceutical analysis will be provided. Research in Headspace GC is very active and growing with new applications being reported continuously. I will give you a little history and its scope because is, this is um, the most modern trend of the GC machine and the use of the headspace has come uh, to be in notice very recently. That is why I am spending special time on this particular new technique. The idea of analyzing samples of the vapor above a solid or liquid for their organic content originates long before the development of GC. The first reported use of static headspace with GC occurred in 1958 and the first widely read use of dynamic headspace that is the purge and the trap method 
with GC occurred in 1990s. So, it is not very old, soon after the introduction of Tinax as a commercial adsorbent. In the intervening decades, techniques for both static and dynamic headspace sampling in combination with GC have evolved significantly and the theory of headspace sampling and transfer of the samples to the GC has been well developed. In 1999, Call provided an excellent review of the principles and instrumentation of headspace GC. More recently, ETRE has provided an especially straightforward review of the principles of static headspace GC. So, you see lot of research has gone into whether a uh, headspace should be static or dynamic. As the name suggests, static means it is not moving and only the adsorption and desorption is taking place. Whereas, in the dynamic, the adsorption is also taking place and the extraction is also taking place. So, as the name suggests, these two methods have their own significant role to play while analyzing these on the GC machine. Static sampling in GC. While modern headspace GC instruments employ static sampling, they typically replace the syringe with a heated transfer line and they, pre and they pressurize the sample vial above the capillary column head pressure which allows for more inert sampling, rapid sample transfer and ready equilibration for interfacing the sample device to the GC machine. The configuration of a modern static headspace is given in the next figure. So, what happens? There is a direct uh, on the uh, column head itself, capillary column, there is a pressurized online transfer. Dynamic headspace, if the vapor phase follows, uh, if the vapor phase flows through the sample and is later trapped on a sorbent or somehow collected, the technique is termed as dynamic headspace extraction as what I mentioned a while ago. I said there is a simultaneous transfer and ex extraction both occurring and that is happening at the headspace of the GC. So, that is why the name dynamic headspace. The most important example is the classical purge and trap technique. Dynamic headspace is often used when a large degree of analyte concentration is needed. In this review, Kolb provided a number of diagrams of common instrumental configuration for several dynamic headspace GC system. A dynamic headspace GC system that uses a cryogenic trap to refocus the analyte bands for separation is shown in the next slide. There are several ancillaries and numerous techniques such as multiple headspace extraction that are based on these classical ideas and are described in the aforementioned references. Recently, sorbent and membrane techniques have also been used for the analysis of headspace samples. Sorbent based methods have been seen as a renaissance since the introduction of SPME was done very recently in 1990 and the introduction of headspace SPME in 1993. So, you can see that how the development has taken place from 1958 to 1993, the headspace both static and dynamic came into existence and was used by the analysts. Use of static headspace GC. Static headspace GC has been used for the analysis of natural aromas and odors in several industries. This is another area in which many papers are being published in far fetching areas. For example, in food analysis, Pinocinian qualitatively and quantitatively determined the volatile components in brandy by static headspace GCMS and Chibrele and Steinhaus used headspace GC along with dilutions of sample and isotope dilution MS to determine the odor active compounds in fresh and processed hops. 
In natural product analysis, Royer et al. developed an automated headspace GC method for the determination of the dithiocarbamates in plant matrices and found that the method was much simpler than the classical techniques. So, in many cases, the static headspace GC turned out to be much simple to operate as compared to the conventional or the classical techniques. Dynamic headspace purge and trap sampling. Dynamic headspace sampling involves the passing of carrier gas through a liquid sample followed by trapping of the volatile analytes on a sorbent and desorption onto the GC. As the name suggests, it is moving, it is getting extracted and it is getting desorbed on the GC capillary column. This is a well known validated technique which is also routinely performed by non-specialists and is the method of choice for analysis of extremely low that is in the PPB and PPT parts per billion and parts per trillion concentrations of the volatile organic compounds in aqueous matrices. For dynamic headspace GC techniques, publication trends continue to rise, but perhaps not at the rapid rate of headspace SPME and some of the other sorbent ba based techniques, which means that the more common and the more trendy uh, mechanism is the headspace with solid phase micro extraction, which is connected to the GC. Uh, machine. Recent uses, as with static headspace sampling, recent applications are seen in a very wide variety of industries including environmental contaminants, foods and aromas. For example, Oliver and Gure use dynamic headspace GC to measure benzene hydrocarbons in virgin olive oil at levels below. 0.1 milligram per kilogram. Martin et al. have developed a dynamic headspace GC method for the determination of aroma compounds in cheese, curd, cultured with various yeasts and bacteria. They found that dynamic headspace GC provided the best quantitation of the aroma compounds, which are often at very low concentrations. The second example further demonstrates the maturity of the purge and trap sampling for GC as the work has progressed from basic developments to its use in solving increasingly difficult problems. So, you see as the recent trends have proceeded more and more intricate systems and more and more intricate headspace systems have been used, more uses. Ruse and Brinkman provided an interesting example showing both the sensitivity and versatility of dynamic headspace sampling coupled with GCMS. For this paper, they analyzed extracts of marine organism for volatile organic contaminants at PPT level parts per trillion using an online purge and trap sampler they were able to determine 55 compounds in a total analysis time of about an hour. An example chromatograph of volatile organic contaminants in water obtained using their method can be seen in this research paper. So, you see that in a such a complicated system where there are so many volatile organic contaminants that too at the PPT level, they have been identified and they have been analyzed very carefully. Headspace SPME. Headspace SPME in which a coated fused silica fiber is used to trap and concentrate the analytes from a static or dynamic headspace process was developed in 1993 and has experienced the strongest growth in the research interest over the past decades. This technique can also now be automated routinely and has been validated for numerous applications. 
SPME is generally applied to samples with concentrations in the PPB low PPM range while some applications in the PPT range have been described as well. SPME has shown pleasantly surprising versatility and has been employed for a tremendous variety of analytical problems as evidenced by the recent applications. And one can see that the headspace SPME when connected or dissolved on the classical splitless GC can work very well. Further new techniques and development while static dynamic and SPME headspace GC techniques have reached levels of maturity that make them suitable for the use of routine analysis by specialist and non-specialist alike. There are several newer techniques that are receiving attention in the literature and that have tremendous potential. So, as what I told in continuously I have been talking about the advancement. Every time a method is developed there is always a need to go ahead and do something more specialized and that is what the scientists are doing world over. They want to find a better and a better and a still better method for the analysis and that is what gives rise to lot of research work. These include membrane extraction techniques and headspace solvent micro extraction. Further, there have been numerous recent developments in the classical techniques that show that while they are mature research and development of new techniques and instrumentation is and should remain active in near future. Because one cannot say that this is it, there, there has to be research is an in ongoing process. Newer and newer methods are developed for very compound specific need. Normal analysis of oils. GC analysis are carried out on a gas chromatograph equipped with FID and a DB5 capillary column having 30 meters length, 0.25 millimeter ID and 0.25 micrometer film thickness. The oven temperature was held at 50 degrees for 0.5 minutes, then programmed it there was a ramp given at 2.5 degrees centigrade per minute to 265 degrees. Other operating conditions were the same. The carrier gas that is the nitrogen flow rate and injector temperature, detector temperature and the split ratios were all designed for this kind of analysis. The GCMS analysis were performed on GC coupled with mass system with a DB1 capillary column having the similar specification. The operating conditions were the same conditions as described above, but the carrier gas in GCMS was the helium instead of nitrogen as what it was in GCFID. Mass spectra were taken at 70 electro volt, mass range was from 35 to 375 AMU and all the essential oils could be analyzed on these. Application of the comprehensive two dimensional gas chromatography with time of flight. I have already talked about this particular uh, analysis in details in the previous lecture. Now, the advantages that are there one has to keep in mind that these compounds are an array of large number of compounds. Almost 394 compounds could be identified and among that 394, 100 were ketone, 27 were ethers, 21 was esters, 27 were acids, 82 were alcohols, 38 were aldehydes and 82 were hydrocarbons. So, you see how specific this analysis is with a minor adaptation one can do the analysis to the minutest detail. Even the VOCs can be analyzed. Application of gas chromatography to for environmental analysis. Nowadays, gas chromatography continues to play an important role in the identification and quantification of ubiquitous pollutants in the environment. 
and all the volatile organics, the polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons can be analyzed on the GC machine with great specification. Sample preparation of course, as I said is always very uh, uh, item specific. That means that sample preparation depends on which type of compound is to be analyzed. And so, sampling and pre-concentration procedures most widely applied in ambient air analysis are sorbent sampling and the cryogenic methods. A wide range of solid sorbents based on silica gel, different types of carbon and organic polymers have been used in the pre-concentrations of volatile organic carbons which is VOCs and semi-volatile organic carbons in ambient air. The desorption is performed thermally or by using an organic solvent, soxalate extraction, ultrasonic extraction, supercritical extractions are also used for desorption of the semi-VOCs from sorbents and the glass filters because they have to be desorbed on the GC capillary column and then only the analysis can take place very efficiently. GC analysis of the VOCs. For GC analysis of the VOCs in air and water samples splitless on column and PTV injections injectors have been used successfully. The separation is achieved by the proper selection of capillary columns of different diameter and length and stationary phases of various polarities depending on the chemical nature of the pollutants to be analyzed. Capillary columns with film thickness of between 1 micrometer to 5 micrometer are the most commonly used, although for the analysis of semi VOCs, thin films are preferred. GC analysis of pH, I have just discussed a while ago, so I will not repeat. But I will only say that a GC with an FID can do the needful, but of course a GC MS is always superior for polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons. GC for pesticide is again a very uh, important area for analysis of environmental sample. The most important classes of pesticide usually analyzed by GC. The OCPs that is the organochlorine pesticides such as those of DDT group, hexachloro, cyclohexane, HCH isomers and cyclodienes have been used for decades for agricultural purposes because of their insecticidal property and are often detected in environmental samples. Although most of the OCPs have been banned in western countries since the 1970s, they are there still present in their metabolite forms and are still present in the environment because of their high persistent and lipophilic properties. And that is precisely why they are called as POP, persistent organic pollutants. How to analyze pesticide? Organophosphorus pesticides and organonitrogen pesticides have become important group of compounds for replacing the OCPs in many agricultural applications because they are less toxic to human and persistent, persist less in the environment than as compared to the organochlorine uh, pesticides. The insecticides pyrethrine, pyrethroids are widely used in the world. Capillary GC is the most widely used technique in pesticide analysis. The selection of GC stationary phase depends on the nature of the pesticides to be separated. For example, for OCPs that is organochlorine pesticide, non-polar stationary phase like DB1 or DB5 are usually used. Semipolar stationary phases like OV17 or OV1701 are usually chosen for the separation of more polar pesticide such as OPPs. Polar stationary phases like DB wax are suitable for more polar compounds such as methamidophos. Splitless injection is generally preferred for the analysis of pesticides 
because of its robustness, but online interesting approach is the direct injection of the large sample volumes using an auto loop, loop uh, interface. What it means that a splitless injection is preferred for pesticide analysis and on the column it is important to have an auto loop interface, so that the compound can be trapped in that auto loop and only release into the column when required to do so. Field portable GC instrument. Now, because the pesticide has become such a menace, one needs to have field portable GC machines as well. The need for past, the need for fast on, on site, the need for fast on site analysis of field contaminants is increasingly and rapidly being used and for the long term trend is to conduct analytical investigation in the field itself. Some of the most important advantages of field an analysis are that it allows real time decisions, interactive sampling and cost effective solutions to the problems faced at the time of investigation. As with much other scientific instrumentation, there is a continuing effort to make GCs smaller and more portable to enable on-site me measurements of environmental contaminants. Nowadays, most common applications of field GC are the determination of VOCs in air such as BTEX and chemical warfare agents, indoor air pollutants such as toluene, Pinene and dichlorobenzene have be also been determined using field portable instrument with detection limit as low as microgram per cubic meter level. Other compounds such as organochlorine pesticides and chlorinated solvents are also screened by field GCs. So, these are smaller versions, smaller machines, but they can do the job of analysis of environmental contaminants very effectively. High speed GC. In high speed GC, as the name suggests, it is fast, rapid, ultra fast GC and has grown greatly in the course of the last few years. High speed GC, which is bound to show important development in the near future is particularly significant because of its uses in solving environmental problems. One of the primary objective in developing the high speed GC was to provide near real time monitoring for field application.